Hello, hi everybody. Hope everybody's doing good today. All praises. Welcome everyone to another series of Urban Garden Lifestyles. Now, I hope you enjoyed my other three series and that you did take time to like, share, or subscribe. So, I would be very grateful if you did the same for this video too. This time, we've had a lot of rain here the last few days. So what I decided to do is continue and work on my project today because it's a sunny day. And I wanted to finish trying to make my cement pot. Now you know how they made Grecian statues. I always wondered how they made those togas because you know, those old Grecian statues, they had these pleats like this in those togas. So actually after surfing, of course, other YouTube channels, I saw that people were making um, containers and they had that, that uh, gathered uh, uh, style to it. And so I said, let me see if I can do that too and try to put some ideas of my own there and see if I could also create something that was similar to a stone container. So what I did was, these are my supplies. What I did was, see this bucket? This bucket came from Home Depot. It's a paint bucket, it's an orange paint bucket. And this is just a old Tupperware container that I attached to the top of it with clear scotch tape, the wide tape. And I also put a hole in the top of the Tupperware bucket because my plant container, I wanted to have a drain hole in. So I got this hose and what I did was I put a hole in there. I stuck this hole in there because I wanted to stay there because as I start to make this uh, container, I wanted to have a drain hole in my plant container. So what I did was I took my pruners and I cut a piece Piece. Bear with me. Let me take my glasses off. I'm going to score it all around the edge and cut it like that. Now, that is going to give me a drain hole for my container. Now, cement containers are made with quick creek cement so i purchased a bag of quick creek cement and before i mixed it i got a piece of fabric from my house an old piece of fabric and i placed it over the hole like that of course the one i used was a little longer but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now, the reason we use this is because when it gets heavy with cement, you can gather it like that. And once you have it the way you want it, the cement will dry on this form. And then after it dries, after it cures for several days, then you can lift that concrete pot off of this form the way I did here. This was a longer scarf and I lifted it off this form. Now, I also left the drain hole in there. When I lifted it off, I kept the drain hole in there. Now, it took about three days for it to cure good and after I allowed this to dry, look at the outside. It's a little rough. I'm gonna put another coat of cement on this and smooth it out with a paintbrush. After I made the 
uh, top portion of my concrete container, I had to make a base. Look at this. I'm going to lift this up. Not too heavy. See that base? There goes my glasses. <laughs> That's the base. Now let me show you how I made the base. This is nothing more than a plant container. It had a plant in it. And what I did was I put a plastic grocery bag in it and see this dirt in there? I had that tube, the similar tube like that, I put a tube in there, but it was tall. I put a tall tube in here. It went right through the dirt and it stood out about that tall. Okay? This tube came through the dirt. After I had positioned the tube, which made a hole through the dirt and also um, through the bottom of the, of the um, plant container, I then mixed up some concrete. I have a little quick, quick, quick free con excuse me, concrete in here. Of course you want to wear a mask when you're using mixing concrete, and I do have one here. I'm not going to mix yet. And I mixed it in this container with a little water to the consistency that I wanted to use. Okay, you get that so far? After several days, it cured and it made this base, okay? This base right here, which is a little rough, but I'm gonna smooth that out. Now, the very next step is to secure the first part of this, this top of this base to the bottom section. And what I have here, what I have here right now, let me just stabilize this off. What I have here is two planters filled with dirt that's pretty heavy. And this one is, has dirt and I put a brick in it because after I start painting it and applying, one second, and applying my, um, applying my concrete to it, and I have some pre-made concrete, which is a little more firm, so I don't have to mix it. I bought some that's already pretty firm that I want to use. When I start adhering it to the bottom, I want this top to adhere to the bottom of this base. Now, after that cures for uh, several days, and it should cure and attach itself pretty solid, then what I'll do is I'll start to very lightly sand some of the grit off of that with my sandpaper. And I'll do that before I add some paint because I want a nice, beautiful, white uh, concrete container. Now, this isn't really difficult. It was fun. I just took my time and my spare time and I, I worked on it periodically. But today, what I'm gonna do is, I have a paintbrush and some water. I have a paintbrush and some water. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna apply my mask now. And I'm gonna mix up some concrete. 
And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint with my brush another layer of concrete all over this top part of the space. And it'll probably drain down and some of that, uh, that uh, uh, concrete will eventually fill in on the base as well. But I'm gonna use this to really seal it. But I want to put another coat on this top container, okay? So let me put on my mask. This won't take long. I'm going to put Ooh, that's, that's why I Let me add some water in here so that Where's my hose? It doesn't have to be real heavy either Put some water in there so the dust doesn't go back Now I have this, um, auger. Oh, auger. Thank you, Andre. <laughs> I'm going to mix it. another big bag in the garage. I don't think I'm going to need any more than that. it's going to thicken and that's okay too so using my paintbrush I'm going to tilt this so I can get a little bit of the thicker part of this consistency and I'm just going to paint add which adding which is adding another layer on this container. See that? I'm going to paint this all over. I might have to move my chair around so I can see the front part. And I do believe that these are. Uh, other plant containers that I have filled with dirt are going to help to stabilize it so that it doesn't move. Okay, I might have to wait for this to thicken up some. So what I'm going to do is go all around this plant. See that? That's a little thicker. I'm going to go all around And I'm going to coat this pot again. Wow, this is thickening up pretty good. That's why I got my water hose because 
you know, concrete sometimes is sticking up as you're working with it. Now, I hope that, I really hope on another video, you'll be able to see the finished, completed project. And since this is my first time, you know, I hope that the next container I make, I've worked out some different strategies. And I don't know why I decided to make one this huge. The next one I make, I think I'll make it a little smaller. But I have really enjoyed doing this one. And so far, so far I like it. See that? So I would actually go all around this container and add another coat of concrete. Now, remember I told you that I'll probably take you to some other locations where I know people in the community have beautiful uh, oasis, have created outdoor living space as an extension of their own living space. And there are two gentlemen that told me to come by and so we want to do a walkthrough. One gentleman has a beautiful koi pond and it's right in the urban community. And it's just, it's breathtaking. It's breathtaking. You would actually think you left the country. It is beautiful. And he's, he said we can come and visit him. And that's going to be great to watch. Because you're going to be amazed. When I saw it, <laughs> I almost fainted. But you can get a lot of ideas of what you can do if you want to have an outdoor living space. Now, some people are really leery of coming outside because of bumblebees and mosquitoes and stuff. But remember I told you in the other video that you can get uh, mosquito plants. There's so many of them and grow them in containers. So when we have functions, what, a lot of times what I do is this. Look, wait, I'll be right back. Stay right there. Be right back. It's okay. That's Rocket. Okay, Rocket. Don't step in the cement. Oh my goodness. Let me see. Let me get that up before you get it on your paws. You sit down now and be a good Rocket. Okay. So remember I told you you can get uh, make uh, put mosquito plants around if you're le leery of mosquitoes. This is a peppermint plant. It smells just like peppermint gum. And if you get a mosquito bite, you just take off one of these leaves, rub this leaf on that bite to stop the itch. Okay, so those of you that tell me, I don't do outside. I just can't go out there. It's bugs out there. Girl, let me tell you something about bees. They don't want you. They are after the nectar in the plants, in the flowers. That's what they want. So if you have flowers in your yard, the bees aren't out there waiting for you. They want to, they want to, uh, the nectar attracts the bees and that's where they're going. If you just stand still and not run, you'll see that they're not coming after you. Unless of course there's a swarm of bees as well. That's a whole different story. But I know I have family members, especially women that are afraid of bees. But you know what, what really is sad is when women raise young boys and the women become leery of bees and scream and run you notice the <laughs> the boys will do the same that's not a good that's not a good thing boys should not be afraid of insects so i always tell my grandchildren don't run if they don't want you just stand still and you'll see that they really are after the nectar in the plants so uh, that might be a little helpful and it might inspire you to not be so leery about coming outside, putting plants on your porch, and enjoying the summer season 
because you know we need vitamin D we need vitamin D okay rocket we need vitamin D and the way you get natural vitamin D is from the Sun we lack vitamin D by staying in the house all winter so it's mandatory you come outside get your vitamin D okay from the Sun and you don't have to bake in the sun, but just come outside and get some natural sunlight. Even being in the shade, you get a certain measure of sunlight, okay? So that's something that we've got to get back to doing or walking or riding bicycles or whatever, and just be outdoors. It's really a good thing. And another thing is, my mother told me, uh, when I was single and I, she, I said, my God, I got to cut this grass. She said, yeah, you cut it. She said, because it's good exercise. When I started cutting the grass every week throughout the summer, my stomach muscles got tighter and tighter and tighter, tighter. Now, I know that some of you have allergies and, and, and you don't want to cut grass because you'll start sneezing and coughing and everything and your eyes will start running. Then put on some goggles, put on a uh, mask, because we're all accustomed to wearing masks because it was necessary with the pandemic. Put on a mask and get out there, ladies and men, and cut your grass. It's good exercise, it's excellent for your stomach muscles. Now, I love, me personally, I love cutting the grass. I can't wait for a week to pass by to cut it again. My uh, son even got me a riding mower, but I'd rather use the push mower. But anyway, that's just a little advice that I wanted to share with you. But I don't think I'm going to sit here and paint this whole thing while you sit there and watch. It might be a little boring. But this is all you have to do to make your own to make your own concrete pot and I'm going to take the other heavier mixture see that I'm going to take this other heavier mixture and where's my water and my uh, what do you call it this what do you call this, Andre? Mm, spackler. Oh, okay. And I'm going to take this, and what I'm going to do is add it to the base. Push that in right around the edges. <coughs> Who is that? Uh oh, I dropped it. Push that in. Wait, Terry. I'm I'll be right with you, Mom. The sun just showed up. Hi, Terry. I'm doing a video. Is that Terry? Hello. Hi, son. Hi, how are you? How are you? Did you get me some extra? Um, um I've been doing it. Excuse me. Okay. And I'm going to force this in to adhere to the bottom of the top part of this structure. See what I'm doing? I'm pushing it inward so it'll adhere. Now, when I'm done in future videos, I'll show you how it came out. But I wanna take my time and I really should have put this up on the table, which I might do. So I can make sure I'm getting it in there. And then after I get it in there, I'm going to smooth it out with a brush. After I get that concrete pressed into the base, I'm going to smooth it out with a brush. So what I think I'll do is transfer this to a table so I can get a a little bit higher because I can't lay on this tarp and finish making sure I get all that concrete between the base and the upper structure okay so 
Uh oh. Okay, maybe we better stop now because somebody's starting up their bike on the next uh, on the next block. But anyway, don't forget, please, to like, share, and subscribe to the Garden Lifestyles channel. Urban Garden Lifestyle channel. Urban Garden Lifestyle channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, everybody. Be safe. Bye-bye.